Hey guys, welcome back. Sorry if the video quality is not that good. I hope it's not too distracting, but anyway, we'll be talking about keyboard shortcuts and why you should learn to incorporate them in your daily workflow because they really help speed things up and they can be really efficient. And for the example, for this video, I'll be using GNOME as a desktop environment and Ubuntu uh, because I show KD way too often on my channel as well as Manjaro. So I kind of wanted to change things up. So let's talk about the file manager, for example. So the, most of these shortcuts that you're about to see here are universal and they should work in other desktop environments. Not all of them will, uh, but most of them should. So uh, let's say, for example, as you can see, my cursor is at the bottom left here. By the time I move it here, whether it's my mouse or trackpad and click the X button, let's say I even miss for some reason and then I have to click it again. Uh, by the time I do that, that is kind of slow and inconvenient. And an easy way to just quit an application is uh, by pressing Control and Q at the same time. Uh, so this doesn't just work with the file manager, it just works with any application, just do Control Q and it should exit out. Uh, but because I did open up the file manager and because we use the file manager oftentimes when we use the computer, I'll be talking about other shortcuts related to the file manager. So uh, the most useful ones, in my opinion, are doing Control F if you want to have quick access to the search here. And another one that's really convenient is also Control H. So if you're looking for config files or whatever, instead of having to go to uh, the settings or whatever, I don't even know. Yeah, show hidden files. I mean, this is much slower than just quickly pressing Control H to toggle it on and off. Um, there's also other shortcuts, like for example, if you do Control I, you can take a look at the uh, properties of the folder. And if you even right click on a folder, it gives you other types of stuff that you can do, like other types of shortcuts here. So you could just press, uh, you could just select uh, some folders and press the delete button if you want to delete them. And the most known ones that you probably already know are control C to copy, control X to cut and control V to paste. Uh, and something actually, uh, by the way, I just opened up the terminal with control Alt T. This is default in some distros, not in all of them, um, but that is also useful as well. So let's say you type in something in the terminal. Things are a bit different in the terminal, however, because if you type something in and let's say you select it and you do control C, nothing happens. It's not going to work. Uh, you can't copy it. So the way to copy it is do control shift C. And now if we do control shift V, oops, we, as you can see, we copied it and it worked just fine. So in the terminal, it's almost the same thing, uh, except instead of just control V or control C, you add the shift. Another thing that works for not just the file manager, but for a lot of other programs as well is control T. This is how you can open up a new tab. Same thing with the terminal. If you do control T, it should open it, but it's actually not working. That's interesting. <laughs> I expected it to work on the terminal. Uh, but this does work for the browser as well. And if you do control W, you can uh, delete the tabs that you just created. Okay, hold on. If you, let me let me delete these tabs. Okay, so, so control T opens up new tabs. It creates new tabs and control W closes the tabs. This works for the file manager and it works for Firefox and other browsers as well. Now, if you want to change the view of your folder, uh, like the way your uh, folders are, your folder view, I suppose, um, as you can see, if I press control one, it changes it to this style. And if I do control two, it changes it to this style. So these are the main shortcuts when it comes to the file manager. Uh, of course, there are other shortcuts as well. Uh, but actually, and another example that I could do is let's say you create a new folder, right? Which I think there's, uh, oops, my bad. Uh, there's probably a way to, uh, a shortcut to create a new folder, uh, but I just did control N. And if you do control N, it actually opens this up in a new window. 
which I did not think of that. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's say you create a new folder. Let's say you select it, you press delete, and it was deleted. So here you have an option, you can undo it with the cursor, but not every file manager is gonna give you that hint. It's an er, option to, to undo it. So what you could do is you could press Control Z, and there you go, it undoes your action. So Control Z is a shortcut that is basically universal. Any program that you use, and let's say you make a mistake or whatever, if you hit Control Z, that's gonna undo that mistake. Now, I believe, Control shift z uh, redoes it. So if you do Control z you undo your action, and if you do Control shift z you redo your action. And I found this very helpful when I use GIMP, for example. Uh, if I make a mistake or something, I just use these uh, shortcuts. But this is this is interesting because Control, Control z is universal for undoing, but you gotta be careful because sometimes Control y is used to redo an action, and sometimes Control shift z is used to redo an action. So you really have to kind of test it out depending on the program you're using. Another cool shortcut is if you hit the meta key or the super key, and you hit D as well, you can show the desktop. Uh, this is very neat. Another thing that you can do when it comes to manipulating windows is if you hold the um, super key and you use one of your, your um, arrow buttons, let's say to the left or to the right, uh, your, but, your application moves uh, and splits to, to one half of the screen. And depending on which arrow key you press, it moves to that area. So this works with uh, GNOME. It also works with KDE. Uh, it functions a bit differently in KDE, uh, but I'm not quite sure about others. I know Deep and now also the desktop environment also supports that, but yeah. If you do control and the arrow pointing up, it maximizes the window, and if you do it pointing down, it makes it uh, smaller back to its original size. Uh, so that's another uh, really useful um, shortcut that you could use. Also, if you do uh, hit the super key with M, you can take a look at the calendar. And also there should, uh, you can also do this with uh, super and V at the same time. And um, if you do, whoops, hold on, my bad. So if you do super and Q, this is really interesting. You can take a look at uh, your applications here so this is for GNOME specifically, but you can take a look at, at what their numbers are. So if I wanna launch Firefox, I just do meta key and then two. So this is really nice if you wanna access even your launcher. Again, you have to uh, hold the meta key and Q and it lists, it numbers each of your programs here. Um, and that's how, let's say I want the uh, file manager. So this is the fourth item. So I do meta and then four, and then there we go. And let's say I wanna close it, control Q. As you can see, I don't really need to use the mouse for anything. And for Firefox, for example, again, this is really, really nice because let's say I do Control T and then let's say I go to DuckDuckGo, for example. But let's say I don't want the previous browser anymore. Well, what I could do is Control 1 to shift to that one. Okay, <laughs> this is not working. It does work with the Brave browser, though. Perhaps... Perhaps there's another uh, shortcut for this, but let's say I cycle there, okay. Uh, if you hit Control W, that's how you can exit out of that one, uh, the previous tab. And this is, this is certainly useful when it comes to shifting around tabs and moving around tabs and uh, really navigating yourself through the uh, browser. You can definitely do it with minimal mouse interference. Now, another thing, let's say, for example, a, a text editor, whether it's a text editor or a file, or I mean an image, an image editor or whatever, anything that deals with opening files, uh, something that you could do is control N, or not control N, my bad, control O. If you, if you hit control O, then it automatically lets you 
open up an existing file. So this is very helpful as well. If you do control O, again, the control T works as well for a new tab and control W to remove that tab. And let's say you just type something up and you wanna save it. You can either do control shift S. If you add the shift, it, it means save as. So you can save it as a new file. Uh, so let's just type in text here and save it. Press enter. So here we have it saved or if you want to uh, just simply save it, let's say you add just one like change here, right? Like you change something, you don't want to save it as a new file, you just hit, hit uh, Control S and there you go. It saves automatically, it even says it right here, gives you feedback, Control S, saving file. Or Control Shift S, you can save it as a new file. Um, so yeah. And when it comes to other keyboard shortcuts, well, there are plenty of keyboard shortcuts. I only covered the most useful ones that I think uh, should be used. But of course, there are many other shortcuts. And let's take a look here, actually. And the settings, if you take a look at the settings, you can see there is definitely a lot of shortcuts here that already exist. So I would recommend, oh, also print screen. That's how you can uh, save a screenshot. But there's many, many different types of shortcuts here. And if you do also, uh, what was it, meta plus L, I believe, you can also access the lock screen. This is nice if you just wanna take a look at how your lock screen looks, uh, if you have changed the wallpaper for it. But there's certainly a lot. And if you do control H, what is it? Oh, super H, you can minimize your window, which is really nice. I just found that out as well. Uh, but let's say you want to add a shortcut uh, for launching a program, for example. Well, you could just say Firefox, for example. And the command, all you have to do is really just type in Firefox. It doesn't work for every application, uh, but if you want to launch a program, you just have to go to the application folder and um, paste the uh, uh, the address location into here as your command. And then for shortcut, let's just say Alt and F, and we just click Add. And now, every time I press Alt F, I can access my browser. So I think that this is really nice. It's not just taking advantage of the shortcuts that already exist on your system, uh, but it's also the uh, options that you have to create your own custom shortcuts. And I definitely encourage you to make your own custom shortcuts, especially for the programs. Like if you wanna access uh, your web browser or LibreOffice Writer or a text editor, whatever, right? If you want to access it really quickly, just save yourself some time, make a keyboard shortcut, and there we go. You can open and close your windows and you can shift through your windows as you can see like right here. Um, you could just, oh, and also there's Alt Tab. I forgot to talk about that one. Uh, if you want to shift through various windows, let's say I open up another instance of this, if possible. Uh, so Alt-Tab lets you do this, but I mean, you probably already know about that one, so. I don't know why it's not closing this time. And Firefox is acting out, there we go. So yeah, that was basically it. Uh, these are just some simple keyboard shortcuts that most of them are universal and work uh, everywhere, or at least in most environments and applications and whatnot, so. I find it to be very useful. I started using more and more keyboard shortcuts and it certainly makes things a lot faster and a lot more efficient. So that's why I recommend that you try it as well and you'll be less dependent on using your mouse or especially trackpad. It can get annoying on a laptop. So yeah, so I hope this video was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it and yeah, thanks for watching.